name is John Donnelly. I am a reporter with uh, Congressional Quarterly and Roll Call. I cover defense. And uh, I'm also the chairman of the National Press Club's Press Freedom Committee. So what is tonight's event? It's pretty special. Indeed, it's historic. For the first time, we have assembled in one place virtually all the journalists who have gone to jail in the United States for doing a vital part of their jobs. Not only the reporting part, but also protecting the identity of sources, sometimes confidential sources, protecting the materials, the, the note gathering materials or the videos with which they used to produce their sources. And tonight we're going to hear their stories. And I also suspect we're going to hear some views on whether a national shield law is needed to provide federal protection for journalists looking to protect sources and note gathering materials. The National Press Club think there, thinks there is a need for such legislation. Now to moderate this evening's event, we're happy to have with us one of the reporters who's done time for committing the First Amendment, as it were, Brian Karam. Brian is the executive editor of Sentinel Newspapers in Maryland's Montgomery and Prince George's counties. He's a, he was a producer and correspondent for America's Most Wanted, and he's also a best-selling author. Brian's principal qualification for moderating tonight's discussion is that he received the National Press Club's Press Freedom Award in 1991 after he was jailed four times for protecting a confidential source. So Brian, take it away. Thanks. Hosting and moderating this event, and it came to me, and I'm going to give all due uh, credit to my wife. We were sitting watching a television show called The Newsroom, and um, we sat there and watched uh, Jeff Daniels actually, you know, go to jail for the First Amendment, and. Um, and I said, you know, I didn't do anything like that. And she says, yeah, how many people have actually done it? You all should actually get together. So that's the, the basis for us getting together this evening. And I appreciate you guys being here. First, I think maybe we should talk a little bit about the press itself and the problems of the press before we go forward. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we're the greatest people on earth. We've all made mistakes. We're human beings. But I have dedicated my life, um, and as everyone else here, to trying to be a disinterested third-party observer. Doesn't matter where the information has taken me, I want to go get the information. If my facts are wrong, correct me. If I make a mistake, I'll correct it. I have no, other than that, no agenda. Um, opinion pages are different, but news pages are not. News pages are supposed to be vetted information where news is disseminated to the public. As such, all I have is the ability to go and ask someone to talk to me. They can tell me to go to hell, which happens on an occasion. Uh, and more likely than not, people do want to talk, and they'll talk to you. Some of the information you garner and gather is not information that they want anyone else to know that they're connected to, and they ask for protection, and we give it. But not always, and not easily. It's a hard choice to make, and the consequences are even harder. And when we all got together tonight, I, I, I said this is kind of like my family. I feel like we're all family, because we've all gone through this. As uh, my friend John Walsh said, this is a small club, no one asked to be a member, and we really don't want any more members. I want a National Shield Law. I, if there's something that comes out of this evening, I hope we all can agree that reporters need to be protected and the information needs to be gathered and disseminated. We do cover too much Justin Bieber, too much Madonna, too much Kardashian, and I don't care. It's, it's nice on the entertainment page, but it shouldn't dominate coverage. The problem is, when you take away our ability to gather information, what are you going to have left? What is there left to disseminate? But that type of information, the news, let me tell you, news doesn't stop. You can turn on the television at any point in time, and there's going to be something on that's news, or parading is news. Or you can get on the internet, and you can find facts that are not vetted. You can find pseudo-intellectual garbage parading as information from a pseudo-website that isn't news. How do you tell the difference? Right now, more than any other time in our history, we really do need good, solid news gathering. And we need the government to back off and let us do our job. 
There was a recent interview, John Oliver, with Edward Snowden. That was probably one of the best pieces of journalism I ever saw. We always say in journalism that we have to disseminate the information in a manner that makes people understand why it's important to them. So you may not actually care about a board meeting. You may not care about tax meetings. But you do care if in the board meeting they decided to take away your backyard and build a highway. It's our job to let you know that. By the use of talking about sending pictures of your privates halfway around the world, John Oliver put it in very blunt terms why it's important, what happened with the information that the NSA gathered. We all laughed, but it was brilliant because it boiled it down in a nutshell as to what it's all about. And people could understand that. You don't want your junk being texted all over the world. That people could understand. Usually gets a laugh. I'll live with it. <laughs> Reporters should never forget our mission because those in government don't. They know exactly what they want us to know and not know, and they're better at hiding than, they are at unco than we are at uncovering information. And in fact, they will also tell you, if you, we all talked beforehand, and we came up with a couple of things that's pretty true. All of us believe that all we have is the ability to gather information instead of a subpoena power. We don't have subpoena power. The government has that. The government has the ability to pick you up and shake you upside down and shake whatever they want out of you, and they do it to reporters rather than doing their own jobs. Three quick stories will illustrate this. There isn't a reporter who's been on the job for more than two weeks that will tell you that a public information office, a corporate one or a one in government, is there to provide you information. They're there to keep you from it. It's never been worse. It has never been worse. Police reports, county reports, stuff that used to be I could go in and ask for it, you don't get anymore. When I first started in this business, police reporters, we had our office in the police station. Not anymore. Can't even get in the police station. Secondly, WMATA. How many of you from Washington, D.C. area ever traveled the metro? Well, it's bur it burst into flames again today on the red line, apparently. And uh, a couple of months ago, a woman died at L'Enfant Plaza of smoke inhalation. Our newspapers, we called WMATA. We asked them what their procedures were for evacuating people. They said they could not tell us because it was under investigation by the NTSB. I said, part of it is available online. Use what's online. I have questions. It's under investigation by the NTSB. I called the NTSB. They said, I don't know what you're talking about. These idiots should tell you. And that's where it was left. I ended up with a lawyer on the phone who asked if the person, I, my reporter, was asking for the information for the public or for private use. I said, ma'am, we're a newspaper. We're asking for it. For, but guess what? We're going to disseminate it to everyone, and they're going to use it privately. What do you care? You don't get to choose. It's public information. Provide it to us. They do not. And finally, and this is not going to, I'm not standing here going to go right, left, or, or middle on this. And I, as I said before, I've had problems with every <clears throat> presidential office since Reagan. And I've called the White House for every president since Reagan. But this is by far the worst I've ever seen. I called the White House. It was probably three weeks ago. Uh, if you're from the Washington, D.C. area, you also are aware of what PEPCO is, the nation's worst provider of electricity, which often goes out on a warm summer day with no breeze. And somehow they managed to turn the power off at the White House, which we thought was hilarious. So we called to ask them, how long was the power out in the White House? And they said, I can't tell you that. I said, well, can I talk to someone? Do you have a name? So I gave him Josh Ernest. I know that name. He goes, well, he didn't know you. I go, well, I don't know him either, but I'd like to have the information. So I can't give you that. We can pass your request up to someone else, and they will call you back. I said, what if they don't call me back? Who do I ask for? I can't tell you that. I said, son, were you there? And I know that he was just the young guy on the phone. I said, I know you were there yesterday, right? Yes. So how long was the power out? I can't tell you that. <laughs> this is the White House. Then he hung up on me, honestly, hung up on me. First time I've had that happen in 30 years. Freedom of information isn't going on. There is no transparency. And the people that are gathered here today are not only, uh, I, 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 I'm humbled by all of their experience. Everyone here put it on the line 
to gather information for the press to disseminate to the public. And I hope, if nothing else, we will serve by being here today the first step in a, in, a, in a national shield law and serve as an example for young reporters what you should do. I don't ever want to go back to jail for that. It gives me goose flesh every time I think about it. I will close with this. Everyone up here said when they were, you know, first arrested and faced the uh, prosecution, they all told us, hey, we believe in the First Amendment, just not in your case. And some of us had to face the prospect of uh, other brethren in the press thinking that we did this for private gain. And that came to me. I was sitting, I, uh, Judy and I had this discussion <laughs> about what we will and will not wear. She'll never wear green again, I'll never wear orange. <laughs> but I was sitting in the orange jail togs in the underwear that had the stains of a thousand people who had worn it before me with the vinyl brown vinyl sandals on and had to listen to someone tell me that the reason why I went to jail was to further my career. At that point in time, I had just gotten into a jail fight with a guy who called me names and it was the only fight I got into in jail. And I sat there thinking, if this is where my career is going, I don't know if I want to be a reporter. <laughs> Everyone here has made a sacrifice equal or greater. Um, I'm proud of, of to be a member of this group.